Hello! In this video we'll see how experimental design can be used to evaluate robustness. And let's review this on the example of diacloprate analysis with LCMS in tomatoes. Uh, for this analysis one of the most important parameters is the sensitivity. And the sensitivity is largely influenced by ionization source parameters. The nebulizer gas flow, the drying gas flow and the drying gas temperature. Of course, sensitivity for diagloprate is also influenced by other parameters such as mobile phase composition. But within this video, let's see uh, the robustness only in the context of these ionization source parameters. During the development of the method, ionization source parameters have been optimized and the optimal values for nebulizer gas pressure, drying gas flow rate and drying gas temperature have been found to be 50 psi, 10 liters per minute and 350 degrees. And now, before we can start evaluating the robustness, we need to figure out how much this robustness, um, how much uh, these parameters may change during uh, experiments. And uh, we have decided according to our uh, previous knowledge that uh, nebulizer gas pressure may change by 5 psi, the drying gas flow rates by 1 liter per minute and the drying gas temperature by 10 degrees. And to study these effects we can use a so called cubic or full factorial design. This means that we ev uh, evaluate the influence of these parameters to the sensitivity of diagloprate by carrying out all possible combinations of these parameter variations. However, if the number of uh, parameters that may influence the sensitivity increases, the number of measurements with this full factorial design become quite large. Therefore, there is also a possibility to do, carry out a fractional factorial design, a so-called reduced design. And for example, in this case, it is possible to carry out only four measurements to evaluate the effect of these three parameters and their combinations also. Uh, so to do this, you need to carry out the experiments on the uh, parameter combinations as given here and evaluate the signals to, evaluate, to study the effect to sensitivity. And we can see that these experiments can be divided from the nebulizer gas point of view to two sets, the low values and the high values of nebulizer gas pressure. At the same time, the drying gas flow rates and the drying gas temperature are for both sets both high and low. Therefore, we can study the effect of nebulizer gas as follows. If we have the signals, we can combine the measurement results obtained at the high nebulizer gas flow pressures and the ones obtained at the low nebulizer gas pressures and calculate the effect of nebulizer gas. And while comparing it with the uh, sensitivity in general, we can find the effect in percentages. If we compare this effect with the repeatability limit, for this method it has been estimated to be 5%, we can see that it is not very high and we can say that nebulizer gas probably does not affect robustness itself. We can do the same for drying gas by reorganizing this table so that we have also two measurements for the low drying gas flow rate and two measurements for the high drying gas flow rate. And similarly, we can, come, we can calculate the effect of drying gas by uh, comparing the results obtained for the high drying gas flow rate and for the low drying gas flow rate. And in this case, we observe a remarkable effect of 17%, which is significantly higher than our repeatability limit. This means that drying gas variation will probably influence our robustness significantly and we have to pay specific attention to this parameter. Additionally, it is possible that different parameter combinations also influence our results. 
These can be studied as interactions of parameters. To calculate the effect of parameter interactions, we can look at the not values, but the levels of these parameters. For example, we uh, you look at these as pluses and minuses. The low levels are marked as minuses and the high levels are marked as pluses. And to look at the interactions, we multiply these signs. And we can see that also for the interactions, we have two experiments that rep are represented with a high level and two that are represented with the low level. Basically, what we do here is that we investigate if the nebulizer effect and drying gas effect can be added up to the sum of these two effects. Or maybe there is something additional, a so-called interaction. Numerically, we can see that if we now uh, combine the interactions that have been observed for the high level, and to compare it with the ones that have been observed for the interaction low level, that the interaction for nebulizer gas pressure and drying gas flow rate is 9%, which is somewhat higher than the repeatability limit. Meaning that in this case also the interaction of these uh, parameters may be important from the robustness point of view. Graphically, we can look at it by uh, comparing the signal for different combinations of nebulizer gas and drying gas. And we can see that uh, with the increasing drying gas flow rate, independent of the nebulizer gas pressure, the signal increases. But the extent of this signal increase is different. And this is a very uh, good way to graphically see if interaction occurs for different parameters. However, parameter interactions may not only influence sensitivity, but also other parameters, such as selectivity or other. This was the experimental design using, used for robustness evaluation in short, and you can find out more about it in the materials.